Hi, this is Steve from RX Bandits, and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi. I'd like to welcome you to an interview with Steve Choi from RX Bandits. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm awesome. I just want to say thanks very much for your time. I'm stoked that we're finally being able to do this, so thanks very much. Cool. Glad to be here. So I want to kick things off just by stating that you're now hitting the road with Circus Survive. How are those shows treating you so far? It's good. We're about um, five shows in. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a long one. It's about five weeks. So, so far, so good. I'm just trying to get into the groove, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Working out the kinks and stuff, I guess. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Nice. I was reading an interview with Circa where they actually mentioned how you're a band that they've been wanting to hit the road with for a while. So I was just wondering, was the feeling mutual to begin with? Or what were your feelings when they initially said, hey, we want to actually have you guys come along with us? Yeah. Um, we tried to make this happen a few years ago. Um, but we weren't able to do it just because of scheduling conflicts. So, you know, we're, we're all really good friends. We do like a project together called Sound of Animals Fighting, which we recently did shows for last year. And um, yeah, it finally worked out. And I think that it was a bill that a lot of people were happy about. And we were really happy to get to hang out with them every day. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's just cool, you know? We're all just chums, buddies, you know? So oh, that's it's awesome. Fun. Yeah. I saw this thing uh, you posted on your Facebook yesterday, which were, uh, it was the pre-show warm-ups before Montreal, which was this video of just all you guys going crazy and screaming yeah. music pretty much. What happens behind the scenes before you hop on stage? Is that kind of realistic or what goes on? Yeah, honestly, that is. Uh, sometimes we just like blast music we like just to get pumped up because sometimes it's like really hard to go from sitting and like sipping tea and dead silence to like going out on stage and trying to like be exciting and give a show. So. Um, Fugazi is one of our favorite bands. We were just blasting them, and sometimes we just get goofy because, you know, sometimes you're a little short on sleep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you've had a little too much coffee. Sometimes, you know, you were tired, so certain people will drink, like, three Red Bulls in a row. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> with us, like, partying less and being more healthy, I guess that's just one of those things yeah. that happens so yeah <laughs> you mentioned blasting some of your favorite bands aside from Fugazi who are some others that you play to kind of get revved up that's a tough one I mean we honestly listen to so much stuff like it could literally be anything from like a Kimbra song to like a Fugazi <laughs> song really? to like you know a refused song oh, cool. so it really depends some days it's just reggae and we're just chilling there listening to music sometimes we're just being complete idiots, like trying to make each other laugh. Um, so yeah, we try to mix it up, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah. I read something recently that stated how you guys kind of discourage moshing a little bit at your shows. Um, I totally love that point of view. So I just want to say thank you for us in the crowd, because yeah, that's yeah. my side of it. But I was wondering what, uh, what kind of got you onto that and that mindset for it? Well, we never really like to like limit people yeah. or dictate what they should do and like I totally get that like moshing is some something that like people get into and there's definitely those bands and shows where that's legit yeah. however we try to really promote like everybody participating and moshing is like a really polarizing form of show enjoyment you know pretty much anybody that's not feeling really aggressive generally speaking and this doesn't go out to you girls who are way down to mosh but generally speaking you know it kind of just a big sausage party in the middle <laughs> with a bunch of bummed out people kind of like looking to the side circling them like a, yeah. a musical fight club or something and so yeah we just kind of we, we you kind of look at the faces of these people that are kind of like trying to watch and they're just like, ah, yeah. you know? And so we just started kind of discourage it, try to promote just dancing and moving, you know? It's like, do what you want. I'm sure there's plenty of bands you can mosh to. We're, we're just not one of those bands yeah. that tries to, you know, promote that. So. No, thanks for sharing that. I was really yeah. curious about it. Well, I have to, of course, bring up Gemini, Her Majesty, which is your last released record, or latest release. I have read that you kind of wrote it in mind, not thinking about how it would come through live, or in its live setting. Yeah. So how are they actually coming across on this tour? You feel it's vibing well? How's it going over? Generally speaking, like, people are becoming familiar with these songs, I feel like, way quicker than they have with our past records, because especially musically with this record, I feel like we refined things and in certain ways really simplified the structures of the songs, even though we try to keep a level of technicality and complexity. So we've been really pleasantly surprised with the response that our audience has had to these new songs. I feel like it's a lot quicker than usual, and they're really pumped up, and it really pumps us up. So. For yourself, which songs off of the album are your favorite to play live at the moment? Um, 
I really enjoy playing a song called G2G. Um, I really enjoy all of them. There's a couple on there that are like really complex for me live just because my position in the band, I have so much to do on some of them and sometimes I just totally get it wrong and <laughs> mess it up super bad. But uh, my honest answer is a boring answer. I kind of like all of them that makes for sense. different reasons. It's an honest answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, being that the record was released last year, any plans for something new? What's going on on that front? Um, we're just kind of doing this tour, and um, we did a couple runs on the East Coast and West Coast, but for now, we're just going to get through this, take the holidays off, and then regroup after that. But we're the type of band that's always looking forward, so inevitably, I'm sure we're going to eventually get back to writing and doing that. So Nice. Yeah. And I have to bring up the covers EP, which you released... Yeah. last year it was really neat like they covered everything from fugazi as you mentioned before to weezer like it was such a neat thing to hear your spin on these certain tracks cool thing so are there plans to maybe work some of those in your live sets or are you kind of just focusing on your own material yeah there have been times where we've randomly played some of the covers we did like the we did a blonde redhead song yeah. on that ep it's one of our favorite bands also um we some of them are like hard for us to learn now because we have so many songs that sometimes we forget like completely how to play the song. <laughs> like it's hard to remember your own, yeah. yet alone someone else's. So I think we've definitely talked about doing another covers EP because those four songs that we chose were like four out of like hundreds. And it took us so long to like finally decide on which songs we actually wanted to do. So um, it's definitely something that's really fun. And um, there's just not really many opportunities. Like last summer was an album release tour. This is a support tour with like a limited set time. So um, when we did like a couple festivals, we played a Weezer cover and stuff like that. But um, I guess we haven't done it as much as we could have, you know. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. Well, and outside of performing the music and creating it, as a band together, what are some other things that you either bond over or yeah. share interest-wise? Um, I guess we try to be like, you know, pretty well-rounded in our lives, like, and at any given point, we could be discussing, like having really heated discussions about films and books, NBA, English Premier League. Uh, Matt and I like to go on bike rides when we're at home. Sometimes we do a lot of our business discussion and stuff like that, planning the band and stuff, and we'll just go on bike rides. Um, that's, I mean, now that we're older, it's much more like docile you know what I mean we're, we're all much more about like <laughs> taking care of ourselves and yeah. longevity and you know and trying to like give the best performance whereas uh, when we were younger it was way more reckless and careless so that's probably another honest boring answer <laughs> <laughs> well did you have everything up today for your fans that are gonna be viewing our interview is there anything you'd like to say to them yeah we just um, released two DVDs. One of them was a live concert from the Glass House where we had a fan voted set that we played. And then the second DVD is a tour documentary from 2011. Um, we just released them. Um, so if you have any interest, definitely check them out and pick them up. We'll have them on tour with us. And thanks for supporting us as always. Awesome. And thank you so much for your time today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. And remember, everyone viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogout.com for all sorts of interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. See you next time.